Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cristal González Ávila, one of the producers for Día de los Muertos. It is my pleasure to be with you all. From el Teatro Campesino to your casita. This year has been very different, challenging us in many ways. We are hoping you, your family, your neighbors, your loved ones are safe during these times. Dia de los Muertos is a very special event here at El Teatro Campesino, and we miss our community. We miss you all dearly. In the spirit of Si Se Puede, we continue to hold space. We've been able to host three workshops this time around in hopes to bring our community together to talk about our antepasados, all the lessons that they have taught us, um, and allowing us to envision a better world for, for all of us, especially our children. Our first workshop was storytelling. Beautiful three sessions with familias and individuals and youth and young children speaking about the people that they love, about the lessons life has taught them, about los sueños que tienen, las dudas, inseguridades, y el deseo de mejor mañana, and the deep wishes for a better tomorrow. We talked about injustice, about justicia, about Mother Earth, about the children separated from their families. We talked about hope and we talked and listened to each other's stories about those that we have lost, especially this year. Dia de los Muertos allows us to reconnect to nuestros antepasados, their lessons, their lives, allows us to connect to our loved ones for that one day. In this magical day, the life of the living and the life of the dead become one. Y es por eso que aquí el Teatro Campesino, we continue to hold this tradition close to our corazones and bringing it to you for generations to come, for our familias y para nuestros hijos. Es un gran placer estar con ustedes de nuevo esta noche y presentarles the one and only Claudia López, who will guide us in the altar making workshop. Muchísimas gracias and thank you for joining us. Hello everyone and welcome to our workshop today. I, my name is Claudia Lopez and I am the proud owner and curator of the Guatemalan Boutique and beautiful and historic San Juan Bautista. I'm very excited to be here today at El Teatro Campesino. I am uh, very happy to come back and do a workshop second year in a row. Now, last year when we were here, there were a lot more of us and I, um, there was a group of us and uh, we had the opportunity to break out in different groups and we had, we were hands on on the altar. Today we're gonna be talking, sorry, I forgot to tell you that, that today we're talking about Day of the Dead altar and how to make it and what are some of the elements that we should have on our ofrenda, altar, whichever way you want to refer to it. But as I was saying last year, uh, the group of people that were here we broke out in different groups and some people got to work on, on the, some of the flowers. Other people got to work on some of the papel picado, which is a cutout paper, which is this right here. And then some of the flowers that I was referring to are these right here. Um, in Mexico, they use mostly um, live flowers and pasuchil, and we'll talk about that in a minute or two. But we have this altar here with a lot of the different uh, paper flowers. So a lot of people got to do different things and at the end, all of us got together and we made a beautiful altar. So it was a community effort. Now this year, as you know, we can do that. And I happen to be here now by myself and Dante back there and then Christy on the other end. So it's just the three of us. And just so you know, yes, I was wearing a mask and right now I'm far away from them. So I'm definitely keeping my social distance. But uh, in any event, so today's workshop is going to be a little bit different. So there are some things that I'm going to request from you. One of them is that I'm going to request that you have patience with us, patience with me. This is the first time I do something like this, so please be patient. Second thing that I would like for you for that I like to request from you guys is actually to keep an open mind. Just remember that all of us have different belief systems and what works for one person doesn't work for the other. So just have an open mind. And then the third thing that I like to request from you today and is the last one, but is very important is to have fun. 
If you join in to watch this is because you're interested in learning basics of uh, Day of the Dead altar making. So let's talk about Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead is a celebration. It's a Mexican celebration that has been around for many, many years. And uh, it's a celebration of life. It's really not a sad event, but it is a celebration. It's one of those things that you want to, um, you want to share with people that, that are within your family and your friends as well. It's a ritual. It's a tradition. So think about it. If you believe that your beloved ones, those who have passed away, are coming to visit, you want to receive them with style. You really want to go all out in order to feel, make them feel welcome and they want to stay with you. So that's basically what Day of the Dead is. It's a celebration. It's a time to uh, share with the deceased ones, with those people who have left a uh, mark in your life. And it could be children, they could be adults, of course. Now, Day of the Dead has its roots in Asian aspects of uh, pre-Hispanic culture. And uh, um, it's changed quite a bit since the, um, since the, Spanish, since the Spanish Inquisition when Catholicism came into Mexico. A lot of different things changed during that time. And uh, um, basically, before um, the Catholic Church came into play into, in Mexico, death was basically viewed as the start of a journey to the kingdom of the dead before reaching heaven. And in the, in, in, along the way, different souls, the souls will have to uh, make gifts in order to get to heaven during their journey prior to getting there. So that's the way that um, death was viewed. So there was no fear of death. So Day of the Dead happens November 1st and November 2nd. Now, the preparation doesn't start the day of or the day before. It actually stay, it starts days before that, and sometimes even weeks, depending on how elaborate your, um, your ofrenda is going to be. We know that nowadays it has become incredibly commercialized, but when you have it at home, all you need is one or two days to get ready for it, just to make sure that you have all your basic elements. And that's basically what we're gonna talk about uh, today. We're gonna talk about that. So really, there is no right or wrong way of making your altar, so long as you do it from the heart. Just remember that you are welcoming those who have departed, those people that you love, those people that you don't want to forget. Just remember that and then you're, you're off to a great start. So as I was saying, Day of the Dead starts basically at 12 o'clock on October 31st. And that is when the children come to visit. It is believed that the children start their journey from, from the other side to visit with us on the 31st of October and they come and they rejoice with you and they share everything with you. So you want to make sure that on the altar you have toys for them so that they can play and they can go back to being children again. So they stay around through the, through the night of the first and then they leave, they go back and they give room for the adults to come visit with us the day of the first and then they leave on the second. So just remember, first and second, not to be confused with Halloween, it is completely different. Uh, so that's basically what happens on Day of the Dead. And remember that it's a feast, it's a complete feast. It is celebrated nationwide through many different states and different regions in Mexico. And the common denominator is to celebrate the death, the dead. But things change according to regions. Some people like to uh, practice a little bit more one thing versus the other two. And then also, if you're religious, certain things are placed on certain uh, um, areas of the altar. Now, we predominantly have um, a one-tier altar, which is just a table. It's a flat surface, and you're going to incorporate all your elements on that table. Then we also have a two-tier, which reflects heaven and earth. And then the three tier, it's heaven, earth, and what's in between. And I'll leave that up to you to fill in the blanks. And then we have a seven tier altar, a seven level altar, which is exactly what we have here. 
There is no right or wrong altar. It's just merely what you want to make. And the reason why we made uh, this seven level altar here today is so that it can be bigger and it can be easier for us, for me, to explain everything that goes on on the, on the ofrenda. When I say altar and ofrenda, it's basically the same thing. Ofrenda is just an offering and that's basically what we do. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So let me point out at the arch. If you look at the arch, it's a beautiful one. It's really hard to make when you make it that big, but you can use just about anything. You can use wire, you can make, uh, what, what we use here is for the edge of my garden. We just use that and it's bendable and then we tied up some uh, flowers. The arch is very important because it is the door from, from, uh, from coming from the dead to coming to life. So that's basically the door and then also you can welcome your loved ones when you have that door. So that's basically what we have. Uh, in addition to that, what we have, let's focus on what we have on the altar right now, on the ofrenda. As I mentioned before, we have the papel picado and we have a lot of it, but believe it or not in Mexico, they cover the whole entire altar with tons of uh, papel picado, which is the cut out paper, the, um, and, and uh, they haven't been different sizes. Now this right here is a little bit modern. Uh, as you can tell, it's nice and shiny, but it just gives, it adds to the festivity. And as you remember how I said earlier, it is definitely a, a feast and a celebration. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we also have white tablecloths. And on every single level, we have some black one right here. Nothing wrong with using different ones because of the fact that we love, we're at El Teatro Campesino and I own the Guatemalan store. We use some textiles. You can see that right here, right at the bottom. But again, there's no right and wrong. In the middle, we have this beautiful sarape piece that we have incorporated. Um, in Mexico, they really don't use a lot of the plastic flowers unless it is for a commercial purpose or, or if you build it outdoors because the flowers will die. Uh, and mainly if it's for showing, but if it's for your significant others, uh, your kids or anyone in your family or your friends as well, you want to use fresh flowers, which we have uh, here with us today. Then another thing that we put all the way to the top are some pictures. There are, depending on the region of Mexico that you're from, uh, the pictures will have to be placed in different places. We are not gonna necessarily focus on that because it also has to do with your religious belief. So we're just gonna place him all over the altar just so that all of us are happy and we don't get into the religious aspect of it. And I think that we, we can all agree with that. So let's start with, that, with this. From the top down, we're gonna, we have over there a couple of uh, the pictures of the DC, some of the people that we want to celebrate today. And then we also get to Let's, we also want to have saints. Now, if you're religious, this means a lot to you. But if you're not religious, it's also just to add to the atmosphere. Um, again, it really depends on your belief system. And I'm very short, so I'm just going to do this. I was supposed to get a ladder and I forgot to get it, but that's okay. We're going to improvise. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. And I have another, another virgencita which I'm just gonna uh, put over here. Well, I can't get up there, so we're just gonna put her here. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. So if you are religious and you believe that the saint of your choice, it doesn't have to be the Virgen de Guadalupe, it could be which, um, any other saint that you believe in, that saint is gonna help you get to heaven, so it's okay to have it on the altar. The other thing that we're gonna um, go ahead and do is that we are going to have salt. And uh, it usually goes on a clay plate, just a little bit of salt. And the salt is used so that when the deceased come to visit, their bodies do not decompose and they are able to go back to their 
death stage and then come back next year and visit with us. So this is usually placed, and remember how I said that we're not gonna focus on the, the exact places because you can put it anywhere, but so long as you have these elements. So you wanna have your salt and it usually goes on the third level and it's gonna be right here. I'm gonna set it right there. And when you have, when you make your Day of the Dead altar, and it's for children, for a child, you wanna have toys, and then it, you also wanna have some sort of animal, the spirit animal that is gonna help him cross the river to get to heaven. So you wanna have your little toy, and it's, oh, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> here we go, we put it right there. And then um, you have your soul right there, and then you have the, the, um, your animal, I put a little dog. Then another uh, very important element is the pan de muerto, which is uh, Day of the Dead specialty bread that our wonderful friend Dante got from, uh, for us from Watsonville, I think. So this is what the pan de muerto looks like. And uh, see, usually there's like a little ball in the middle and that represents the skull of the dead person. And then this, these little, they're called canillas, which are kind of legs. Those represent the bones of the disease. And if you see the sugar around it, the white around it, that basically represents the ashes of the dead. So this pan de muerto usually goes on the level number four, which is right here. So we're just gonna place it there. We got a couple more. And again, you can place it anywhere. And just so that I, don't, I, you know, I actually throw you off a little bit. I'm going to place it somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and place it over here because there is no right or wrong so long as you do it with love, right? So that's your pan de muerto. And then you also have fruits and foods. Now, if you think about it, when you, when you invite someone to come into your home, you want to wine them, dine them. You want to make sure that they have a good time when they're with you. you. The celebration is endless. So what you want to do is that you want to get your hands on the foods that your mom, your sister, your uncle, your friend used to love so that they, when they come here, they can enjoy it with you. One of the most vivid memories that I have while uh, visiting Mexico is that I, first of all, I've been fortunate enough to travel extensively through Mexico and I've been able to experience Day of the Dead in many different states. But one vivid memory is um, this one time when I happened to be in um, Sinsunsan in Pascuaro, we went to the cemetery and I got to see firsthand how uh, a family of indigenous people, everyone was there, starting from grandma who was in a wheelchair to the baby who was still breastfeeding. All of them, the whole entire family went to the cemetery and they were just sitting down on the ground. They had a couple of candles and they have a couple of pieces of bread and they brought their food and they, they shared it with the, you know, with the muertito, with, with the loved one. They put it on the ground and they were sharing with them. So they didn't have a lot of money and it, it was very obvious, but they were doing it from the heart and they were just paying respects. And they spent the whole night because that's usually what they do. They get to the cemetery around 12-ish and then you stay there the whole night because Remember, it is believed that they come to visit, to be with you. Um, another thing that we need to put up there, that we have, oh, the fruits. We have a lot of fruits, thanks to Christy. We have um, water right here, and this, all of this goes right here. There is the water. Why water? Because they will get thirsty coming from the other side, and their journey would be long. The journey will be long, they'll be thirsty, so we want to have water for them to drink. At the same time, we want to place on the altar different things that they loved. You know, like I, my grandma, I know that she used to love um, chocolate abuelita. Who doesn't like a squirt? So we can place it, and there's, again, don't focus on where to put it, just do it with love and do it from the heart. We have apple. We have an apple right here. 
And usually you put a lot more fruit, but just remember that this is a workshop. You also want to bring alcoholic beverages of the choice of the person that you're celebrating. And remember that if it's for children, then the elements change a little bit because you don't want to place alcohol and you don't want to place spicy foods either because it is believed that the children will not appreciate that and will get upset because they don't want to, you know, it, it will not sit well with their, their stomachs. In this case, I have a bottle of wine because um, who doesn't like wine? We have McDonald's because... That's what people eat what they're here. And again, I'm gonna place it in other places just so that you guys, you know, get the, the message that it is okay to place it other, in other places. It doesn't have to be all in one place. I have some more food. We have chicken McNuggets. Somebody went to McDonald's today, which is good. <laughs> I, I think I know who that was. We have some gummy bears. And then we also have Don Francisco Vanilla Nut. Somebody liked coffee quite a bit. Now, um, if it was for my family, I would try to remember what is it that they love the most? What do they like the most? And was it chicken? Was it enchiladas? Was it tacos, burritos? Was it whatever it was, I would go above and beyond and make the effort to get it and place it on the altar because it's a feast, as we said. So we're gonna place this right over here. And then we have biscolata, chocolate with hazelnut. So we'll put it over here as well. So that's some of the foods that we have. And we have some beef jerky as well. That's really cool. And then we also have a paleta that we're gonna place right there. Um, one of the things that has got to be on the altar is the pictures of the disease. You're right on the money if you said that. And uh, I'm gonna choose this one right now because my friend Fauna, she, um, she and I became friends through um, her many visits to my store and she was also a big supporter of El Teatro Campesino. So we wanna honor her here today as well. And uh, I'm gonna place her right over here. I'm sorry, I'm too short. I'm gonna place it right here and I'm gonna move him just a little bit. And uh, it is very important that you gather different things that um, the deceased might need when they come here to visit. Um, uh, for instance, for Fauna, we have her, her reading glasses because she will need them. So you can place them anywhere close to where the picture is. You can place them anywhere. If it's jewelry, like for instance, um, when I pass away and my family or my friends want to have, want to dedicate an altar to me, I would like some jewelry on my altar because I would want to wear it most definitely. So those are some of the things that you can, you can put up here. It could be anything. It could, yes. There's a question. Oh, yay. So that some people don't like to do it because they believe in attracting death to that other person. So what I would recommend, and I've done this, I've done this in the past is that I covered the face of the other person, and especially because it is believed that when the disease comes, um, they want to recognize themselves, which brings up a very good point. Thank you. Who, who asked that question? or see these or these, thank you. But it is very important also to have a mirror. And, and a, on a traditional Mexico, what they do is that they, sometimes they tell you to hide the picture like so, like hide it and then just place a mirror nearby because the disease needs to recognize himself or herself and the mirror will help him do that. So we have mirrors actually all over the altar. We have one right here. We have this one right here. We have another one. And I'm going to place this one right in front of them. So this is when it gets really, really cool because you have, we have, they can see me over here, right? No, that's cool. 
again. All right. So I don't know if you get to see me, but we have lots of pictures. We have all these pictures right here and I'm pretty sure that they, I, they work, um, they collaborated with El Teatro Campesino and that's why we have so many pictures of them. But this is when the altar starts taking, um, life. If you want to say, when you start bringing the pictures of all the, all the deceased, I remember making, um, an altar over at the, at the Santa, Santa Clara University. And it was just fascinating. It, the choir was there and it was going to be, there was going to be a concert that night. And, uh, it had something to be said. I, we made the altar. My friend Manuel and I went over there and we made the altar. And then, um, everyone in the choir started bringing their mementos and, pictures and somebody brought a baby blanket and somebody else brought a little teddy bear and it was just so powerful to feel that and to see it it's it's really nice you guys it's very powerful so um do we have another question no not yet okay let me see i put this right here and they can be all over we have so many of them i don't think i'm gonna get to all of them let me put some more. And I, I'm just randomly choosing different pictures. And sometimes I have, I, so I don't mind even putting them at the very bottom because once again, I'm doing it from the heart and not necessarily doing it by the book because that's not what this workshop is for. It's just doing, paying respects to all these wonderful people who, were they actors, Christy? Some of them were actors. Some involvement in the company. And it is just so neat that we're able to pay respects to them in one way or another. So we have all these right here. And then let's just say if there was somebody who played the guitar, feel free to bring the guitar. If there was somebody who plays soccer, why not bring the shoes? Um, it's just the sky's the limit. So long as you have fun doing it and then you pay your respects and then you let them know that you remember them. That's what it's all about. Another element that is very important is candles. Candles will lead the way. Candles, they look so awesome when you, lead the, when you light them up. The altar takes a whole different look. And you can place them. Usually they're placed at the very bottom, so let's just go ahead and do that. We, we have some more candles here. You can put them all over. Yes. that you should not add to the altar. So we celebrate people, souls. Um, I particularly don't think that there is anything that you can place on the altar um, that, has, that has had life, a soul, a spirit. But when you um, create or dedicate an altar to an object, I think that that's taking everything out of context. That is when you are not really not paying respects to the tradition and the ritual that, that, that is day of the dead. There is a reason why it's called that. So that is the only time that I would invite you not to do it. Like for instance, I've seen altars that are dedicated to, I don't want to say anything in specific because I don't want to get in trouble, but um, for instance, cars, it, and believe me, people do that. There's no soul, there's no transition from being dead to being alive. Um, how much food will you share with that? See what I'm saying? So I think that so long as you do it with respect. I don't think there's an object that you could potentially put here. I, I think so. And as long as it's not offensive to anyone who's going to see it. Now, if you have it at home, then it's a different story. 
Can I move on? Yeah? Okay, great. I hope I answered the question. If I didn't, please ask again, because Christy is my right hand today. <laughs> so the candles, we were talking about the candles. So the candles are actually, they are going to lead the way for the disease when they come. So we talked about the, the papel picado, I forgot to tell you. You know how it's so fragile, it breaks so easily. The papel picado represents the element of air because it moves so lightly. And it also represents the fragility of life, how life can be torn apart so easily. So that's what the papel picado represents right here. And also the fact that it's incredibly, um, uh, festive. The foods, of course, you know, will attract them to come to you. And then something that attracts them 100% and we got to just, you know, um, have it all the time is copal. The copal, where's my lighter? My handy dandy lighter. You can have copal or you can have um, sage. And this is to cleanse the the area to make sure that there are no bad spirits if you believe in that or evil spirits. You can tell that I don't use this very often. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get it. Ah, there it goes. I think I'm gonna get it now. Anyway, so you we have copal here and you usually place it. Um, Okay, I can't get it to work, but it was working earlier and it smells fabulous in here. So anyway, so maybe Christy's gonna help me. <laughs> Thank you. So we, we gotta use the copal, copal or sage. We have a nice, um, we have sage right here. We can burn this as well, but we're gonna choose to do the copal because I, I prefer it just because of the smell, but it is definitely no right or wrong. So the copal is gonna cleanse the area and it's going to prevent from any evil spirit to come here. And then it will also, the scent, the scent will go up to heaven and the scent will just go everywhere and they would attract uh, your deceased as well. Thank you. So the copal, we're gonna place right here. See, it smells so good too. Smells fabulous. And then here's the um, sage. The other thing that attracts them, not only because of the scent, but also the bright orange color, is the sempasuchil, which is a marigold. And if you haven't had a chance to smell it, smell it. It smells fabulous. When you go to Mexico, I'm telling you, the altars are just full of flowers. They are sempasuchils everywhere. They come in gold and orange and then in uh, purple as well. So these usually go at the very bottom or all over too. I like to have them all over. We have another one right here. There is another thing that I like to add, and this is just, a lot of people add this, it's not an element, but it's definitely nice to have. And uh, of course, you know, I have to pick a beautiful textile, but it doesn't have to be. You can make it out of, you know, you can just do this a regular petate, you know, a straw, uh, any type of uh, rug can, can do. What I like to do is that I like to place it in the front So if I want to sit in the front and just kind of reminisce or just have a moment of silence, I can do that. And this is where I like to put my copal. And for those of you who are religious, you may want to also add a cross here. And in Mexico, they always make uh, a cross. They make it out of sand or uh, marigold. So we're just gonna make a little cross right here to keep it very traditional. And there's your cross. There's your copal that cleanses the spirit, your petate, and everything else that you need. Um, so whatever you do, just remember that 
making a day of the dead altar should be your, your, your passion. It should be something that you want to do. There is no right or wrong. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, it needs to be done this way. Yes, it sometimes it's done that way. But if it doesn't fulfill you, then it defeats the purpose of it. Um, the other day is very important to me, and it has a very special place in, in my heart because of the fact that, well, number one is cultural, and I love to promote culture, traditions, and rituals. But uh, um, as a child, I grew up without any grandparents. Um, I wasn't lucky enough to have uh, two sets of grandparents. As a matter of fact, I had a grandma, just one grandma. And for one reason or another, she just didn't like me. And I don't know why, because I'm so lovable, right? <laughs> but <laughs> in any event, <laughs> Christy's laughing over there. But in any event, she didn't like me. She didn't love me. I just didn't know why. I, I, I was a child. I didn't know. So I'm telling you this because this is, this is the reason why I got so into Day of the Dead. So what happened then is that uh, my, my parents immigrated to the United States. And as a result, I ended up staying with my grandma for a total of 10 months or so. And in those 10 months, she and I, even though we, we, we were very concerned about having to live together for those 10 months, um, we learned to love each other. We learned to like each other. And unfortunately, my parents brought me to the state. Well, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, my parents brought me to the United States 10 months. So I only lived with her 10 months. And then shortly after that, my grandma passed away. So I never had a chance to tell her I love you. I never had a chance to say goodbye. And by virtue of being able to do this from the heart, I've been able to find that closure. Sorry, I'm crying. I'm a little emotional because this is very important to me. So I share that personal story with you so that you know that this can be a very healing to your soul, to your spirit, to your heart, regardless of your belief system. Um, paying respects to those who have left the mark in your heart is definitely very healing. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. This is kind of odd because we're doing virtual, you know, <laughs> streaming. <laughs> so here I am crying in front of the camera and nobody's watching me. <laughs> but right, right. thank you. Should um, adult and children altars be separate or is a shared altar okay? I think that it should be, it can be shared. But as I mentioned to you, if you are going to have the altar for the children, then make sure that we don't have, you don't have the alcohol. Have it ready by October 31st, midnight. And then the children are going to come visit. Make sure you have, instead of having the wine and this, this maybe, well, the soda, most children drink soda unless they're very little. But make sure that you don't have the wine and you don't have the, the beer or like the beef jerky, but instead have lots of toys and candy and chocolate and any type of games that the kids used to love to play. When uh, I've been in Mexico and it is fascinating to see how instead of, um, they have the arch and sometimes instead of the arch I've seen like they they make a tricycle or a bicycle with all the marigolds and they go up there or they have it on the side so any type of toys for the kids so having said that I what I would do is that I would definitely incorporate a lot of different toys and things of the children, even their clothing, their shoes, their skateboard, their um, anything that they used to love, their um, headphones or anything and have it there. And then as when they, you can do it like after, you know, certain time, like six o'clock on the first, then you can start changing your altar for the adults to come and visit. And if you want to splurge, you can have two different ones. And remember that the pictures need to be also removed and everything. Hmm? Curious about the food on the altar. What happens? Did it not be consumed? 
should not be consumed. It should not be consumed. You should leave it there. And as a matter of fact, uh, and, and, and I keep going back to Mexico, guys, because it initiated in Mexico. This is a Mexican tradition. We happen to live in California, which is heaven on earth, I think, because we have the best of both cultures. You know, we can get our Mexicanism here, you know, without having to go to Mexico. But uh, um, the foods are left there. They're, they're left there all night long. It, you leave them there all night long. And then the altars are uh, the home altars, as well as the cemeteries, they are torn down on the probably like on the third, on the third there, that's when everybody puts all their stuff away. And then the foods, of course, you know, you just put them away. No more questions? Um, I think you just answered it, but how long do you leave up the, the altar and um, how long is the other look more sacred? Like yeah, sure. So the, the altar, if it's at home, sometimes you can use a corner. Some people put them in a private room. Some people use a whole entire uh, living room. They make a big one, a small one. It really depends. But you can leave it up for as long as you want. You really can. But, you know, tradition calls that it starts on the night of the 31st of October. And again, I, I hate to say this, but not to be associated with Halloween. And it goes all the way to the second midnight. And then on the third, you can just, you know, put it away. Exactly, and that's what I've been saying. I have not been saying Dia de los Muertos. That's a direct translation. I've said Dia de Muertos. Exactly. It is not, it's a direct translation, Dia de los Muertos, but it's not. So whenever you read an article, and it's a really cool article, and they allude to Dia de los Muertos, you know that a Chicano, Mexican-American, somebody who speaks more English than Spanish wrote it because the direct translation, the right translation, the correct translation is Dia de Muertos. And I have another tip for you. When you go to Mexico, you never say Dia de Muertos. You say para muertos, for muertos, for dead. You don't even say Dia de Muertos. Or you say para dia. But it's hardly ever. So everywhere you go is, if you want to say, when are you coming over to visit? And then I want to say, I'll visit you over Day of the Dead. I will not say, te voy a visitar para el Dia de Muertos. Instead, I would say para muertos, for dead. <laughs> I will visit you, but you really don't say Dia de Muertos. That's, that's a freebie. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. What else? What else do I have for you guys? We talked about the mirrors. Oh, we have the skulls. Sorry, the skulls. I forgot about the skulls. The skulls can be placed everywhere. And really, if you're religious, they can represent different things. The, there are small skulls, like these like really tiny ones and they will represent um oh gosh it just left me right now Oof. the there are three different sizes small medium and large let's start with the ones that i remember the large ones are basically dedicated to the father you know and then remember i said religious and they can be placed all over and then the little ones allow me to cheat because i can't remember ah, i can't remember what they're for I'll remember in a minute and I tell you. But then, and the medium ones are also dedicated to, to people. And then the Day of the Dead has been so, Mexico is known, everywhere you see a skull, a colorful skull, you associate it with Mexico. And basically, if you're not religious, it's just a calaverita and you just put it on the altar all over the place. Actually, we should have a lot more here, but we don't so. We're just going to put them right there. And you can get playful, too. Like, you know, somebody asked, is there anything wrong that you can place on the altar? And it really there isn't, and especially if it's Day of the Dead related. We have more right here. I forgot about all these. Let me go to the other side. All right. How are we doing in time? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's put this here. And this one I can't reach. But next time we won't make it this tall. So this is, it's really hard. Okay, let's do it right here. Okay, well, um, what else can I tell you about Day of the Dead? Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you deal with, like, hands or bugs that get into you? 
You just let him be. You just let him be. Yeah, so um, with regards to ants and let him be, um, I just, for whatever reason, I just thought about it. And uh, the four elements that are usually represented, it's a wind, fire, earth, and water. So we have all those different elements represented here. We have all of them, like the papel picado will be the air, you know, and then um, the flowers will be earth. And then we have water on the altar as well. And then the fire will be the different, um, the different candles that you place throughout the, the altar. All right, well, I, don't know what else to tell you guys <laughs> unless you have more questions. <laughs> but this was definitely different, very, very different. And uh, I like it. I can't wait till we go back to the old way of doing workshops so that we can do hands on. And it, it all, also seems like it takes longer to, <laughs> to present this versus just me here. <laughs> so. Right. Yes, sure. So basically, the 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 pre pre Catholicism, there was no fear of death. Just like I, that insert that I read, that it it death was viewed by you know the ancestors as uh, a journey, as st the start of a journey to the kingdom of death. That's all it was. It was the beginning of something. There was no purgatory, then there was no fear of death. And uh, the, the Katrina, the Calavera, the Katrina is the girl, this one right here with the big hat. The Katrina was um, uh, una caricatura cartooned that uh, Jose Guadalupe Posadas, He's the one who started all that. And basically, he made the Katrina to show the fact that it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what possessions you have. It doesn't matter what you look like. At the end, when you die, we all look alike. All of us look alike. So basically, that's what it is. No fear of death. There is no fear of death. So um, that's basically what it represents. And nowadays, everywhere you go, like I've, I've traveled overseas and all you have to do is go somewhere and then you see a skull and voila, Mexican. I was in Ireland um, last September, not this September, obviously, but last September. And uh, we went into a bar and they have, uh, they were actually pouring Modelo, which I thought I was really good. But every Modelo will be poor and a Day of the Dead mug, and I loved it, you know, so I had to buy one because it's way over there. So the influence is everywhere, and that's really neat. I have to tell you that um, traditional Day of the Dead, it's, it's very different from commercialized Day of the Dead. And uh, I think that a lot of people have been introduced to Day of the Dead through Coco, the movie Coco which I think it's a wonderful movie. I think so. And, they, and it, they did a lot of justice to what really Day of the Dead is. Uh, but uh, as Latinos, as a Latino community, I think that we, it is our responsibility to continue the traditions, continue the rituals, understand it, and uh, know that there is a by the book way to do it, but have fun with it too. So when you f have fun with it, then you're able to convey the message to other people. As a business owner, I, I have so many people from all walks of life who come into my store. And right now, October is a very busy day for Day of the Dead. And I have all these people, it doesn't matter the ethnicity, they are resonating with the message of celebrating death and celebrating those people who live in your heart. So I think that is very precious and I am so incredibly proud that we as Latinos are pioneering in that particular aspect of our culture. Do you have questions? Yeah. We have a shout out or an appreciation from Osiris. Appreciate you doing this. I didn't oh. grow up with 
altars. It's a little different in El Salvador. Yes, it is. But feel the need to build one this year. Yes! Do it, girl. Come to my store. I'll hook you up. <laughs> so um, I came from Osa, Osiris. Osiris. I'm from Guatemala. I'm um, Guatemalan born. I lived in Guatemala up until I was almost 14 years of age. That's when I left my grandma. And, uh, uh, but I've learned that I, 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 I love cultura. I just love, love cultura. And uh, um, all of this of Day of the Dead and, and Mexican traditions, I started to embrace before I met my husband of 23 years. So I'm going back to my college years when I would see my cohorts um, celebrating different things that I didn't necessarily celebrate. But I'm one of those people that if there's something good for me, if I am going to be able to get uh, a, a feeling good from tradition, ritual, practice, I'm going to see what I can get out of it. So I, I totally understand what you're saying because in Guatemala, in my beautiful Guatemala, we celebrate El Dia de los Santos Inocentes and we also celebrate El Dia de los Muertos in a complete different way. And I just said Dia de los Muertos right now. I just caught myself. Darn it, you guys are rubbing off on me. But for the other one, we celebrate it completely different. And uh, so... Um, we have a complete different way. We don't really have the skulls, although I have to tell you that uh, now in Guatemala, when you go to the markets, you see a lot of uh, skulls, a lot of them, and they're playful. Uh, they resemble the same type of uh, skulls that you find throughout Mexico. No more questions? We're good? good. All right, okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. I thought I was going to be here by myself, but you guys, are great. Thank you to Christy and Dante for being here with me. And let's just continue our traditions, you guys. Let's continue to promote cultura. And seriously, if you need any papel picado, any skulls, or if you want to hit me up, I'm at the Guatemalan Boutique in uh, San Juan Bautista. And I have everything you need for your altar. And even if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to talk to you on and so forth. So thank you for joining us. Continue to support El Teatro Campesino. Mm -hmm.